Hallelujah. You may be seated in the mood of prayer as we gain ascendance in the spirit. Once again, you are welcome to Zion. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. That means there's a location where deliverance is accessible. It's upon Mount Zion where the laws of God are made bare before men, where choices are put before men, and those that decide to choose the way of God. The devil loses every platform, every legal right to lay claim to their soul or any area of their life. Once again, you are welcome to Zion. The Bible says that upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. And the reason why the Bible reveals that there will be holiness on Zion is that the people that come up to Zion will have to learn how to abide by the laws of God. That's the only basis of immunity. That's the only basis of, of insulation from the domain, the territory of darkness. More and more, we should subscribe to the kingdom of heaven. More and more, we should align with the government of God. More and more, we should seek to obey God. More and more, we, we, should seek, we should seek to walk by the dictates of His Spirit. Upon Mount Zion, it's a place of power. Everywhere the decrees of God are handled. And people humble their hearts in repentance. And align with the Word of God. The Bible says, there shall be deliverance. In a moment of time, just take, take out two minutes and give Him glory. Give him praise for causing our eyes to be enlightened to the wonder of salvation. Many of us were trapped by the devil, held in chain and stuck, twisted, being bound, being torn, cut asunder. But Jesus came, he put us back together again, and he's making a strong nation out of you. Because the voice of the king proceeds from within you. And by you, the government of God will be established in different localities, different places. We give you glory for the wonder of salvation. For numbering us among the righteous. For causing our names to be proclaimed in the congregation in Zion. We give you glory and praise. Glory and praise. Glory and praise. In the name of Jesus. The devil is an illegal spirit. Even when the law is against him, he does not quit. And so when you give your life to Christ, and you pass from darkness to light, many times when you give your life to Christ, some things break instantly. Some other things still remain that are not part and parcel of your allotment in the kingdom of God. And what is happening is that the, 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 claims, the claims of darkness are still effective. And you see, there's a difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. We access the kingdom of God is a wide sphere of a plane of divine life. That people are, are welcomed into on the account of their accepting the work of Jesus Christ. But some other wise men decide to go further. They just, they go beyond salvation. And by an act of their will, they choose the kingdom. The place, they choose to come under the dominion of God. That's the difference between a normal Christian and a consecrated Christian. A consecrated Christian is a man that has decided to separate himself unto God. That's holiness. Hallelujah. Separation unto God. That your life will be revealed in the pathway where you have decided to serve God's will. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. That you not make God a part of your life, but you make him the center of your life. That's a decision. And that's different from salvation. Salvation brings you into the realm of the divine life. But after you are saved, you have to make a choice. That I'm going to leave my days to serve his will. That's another level altogether. If all you have and all you know is salvation, you make, you see God as an errand boy that you send out to bring your husband, to bring your wife, to bring but if you have gone a step further and you want to function in the kingdom of heaven, 
you have decided to separate yourself unto the rule the dominion of god to serve his will that's a higher level at that point in time the jealousy of god will not allow the devil plunder you and even if there's still a legal ground that the devil is still exploring in your life you are sentenced to a time of probation a time of probation the reason why sometimes there's a time of probation is because of the claims of divine justice and the anchorage of that claim and so god allows the devil a time to bring you under pressure so that your life and your destiny will be decided by your choice it brings you under pressure you're under pressure to go back to your old sins but you say no way god if i'm going to die let me die at your feet under pressure to begin some strange things that are violation to the laws of god you say no way if i die let me die at the feet of jesus hallelujah once and again when you satisfy this period of probation the legal right that the devil has will be withdrawn because by an act of choice you have decided to follow god that's beyond salvation you gave your life to christ but now you want to serve god's will you don't want to do your own agenda again because if you are still doing your own agenda the devil will still have a right of way but when you decide that you want to live to serve god's will god takes responsibility for your actions because he's the one that sends you on error and that's why sometimes there's a time of probation before some claims can be taken away that's the way it works in the courts of heaven sometimes salvation brings you liberty to some strongholds some other times your resilience in pledging your life to the kingdom of heaven to serve the will of god on a perpetual basis even when subjected to a test god brags on you the devil said give me an occasion and he received permission to come and plunder you and you in the midst of the fiercest of attacks of temptations of trials you still say like job i don't know what's wrong with my head i don't know why i'm here i don't know why balls sprang out of my body but one thing i know is i know that my redeemer liveth by an act of your will you have decided your own destiny and you have decided to join yourself to god so that you have a common union union with god wherever god goes i go whatever is of god is for me and the devil loses his right to be able to plunder i pray that your faith will stand strong even when it is tested by fire in the name of jesus christ and right now we need to ask the question are you like milk or are you like wine milk gets spoiled with time wine gets better with time we need christians that are like wine too many milk christians a little pressure and they opt out a little pressure they throw in the towel we need men of reckless faith men like elijah that can rebel against the devil friends another generation will have to answer the questions that lie amidst us men of rugged faith we need to arise and rebel against the devil and so the devil might receive permission on the account of his legal right he stirs up a herbalist in the village to put pressure upon you to bring reproach upon you for a season but you refuse to give up you keep pressing you keep going on you don't know how long but you know god is a best, better choice than the devil and you keep going on keep pressing there is a scale of divine judgment and justice that god is looking upon and he gave the devil a yardstick to apply some pressure during the time of probation please do not back out in that time because the bible says that the sufferings of this present time is nothing to be compared if you logically weigh them in the balances it's nothing to be compared do not give in to the suffering do not give in to the pain the christian life sometimes uh, god allows some pain if you understand the metrics of the spirit you know why he allowed it because of the way the spirit realm is structured because of the legal system of that realm and you need to pay a price to break something that somebody paid the price to establish and if you're the one that god has chosen to deliver your family from the hold and the cost i assure you you will pay a price for a time god is a custodian of the just scales of judgment 
he is the one that determines the claims of divine justice uh, 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 so that in a case in a situation in a scenario your obedience to god will break the backbone of the enemy you know these days the faith these days of psychological faith and make believe and confessions without foundation many people believe it, it, it is out of place in the christian life for you to suffer i heard a bishop preach the other time he said jesus suffered it all we are called to inherit everything that is suffering produce excuse me he said jesus uttered the path of salvation and if in fulfilling god's call for his life he had to suffer he had already recalibrated everything and anyone that will fulfill god's will for his life whisper it to your enemy you will suffer too i'm not saying you suffer because you stole you suffer because you laid hand on the on the lady and they took you to the police station i'm not saying you suffer because you shouted where it was about to be quiet and something was laid upon you to quieten you i'm talking about a man that decides to serve the will of god he finds some precious he finds some weights he finds some stuff beyond his understanding but he decides in the midst of the quagmire i know my redeemer living with join and said that when christians are put under pressure and they still keep going on and they refuse to give in that even angels look and they wonder what kind of man is this those rugged men from the back side of the desert like elijah the tisbite the name of his father was not mentioned his village was not recognized he was known by his faith and his ministry because the tisbite means the messenger we need men whose identity will be most described by the message and by their lifestyle by their faith and by their power rainmakers that can change the climate and bring a new atmosphere these are men that have found power with god and men that have prevailed over the oppression of the devil i need new ranks in the spirit i need a new rating from heaven and before you receive a new rating you will go through a strange process tap your brother and say don't die now the light is yonder and i want to get there somebody shout hallelujah i believe god that in the days in which we live nameless people faceless people people that were not known to preach all their family members served the devil god will raise sons and daughters out of them and put crown grace upon their lives it's time for us to put the devil to shame the memory of the idols and the wizards in the territory let's make them a team of the past i know my redeemer liveth he's coming to save you the bible says say unto them that are of a weary heart he will come he will come and save you so he that moves under the strain of persecution he says say to him he will come he that is under the hold of weights of darkness the assyrian's rod has afflicted him encourage him with these words he will come and save you he will come 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 we were locked up in the wilderness there was no possibility of any difference the darkness was thick darkness it was as if someone placed a bitter curse upon us we said we don't understand why we're here we don't know why people die in the family anyhow but we have decided that if we die we'll die holding your feet if we die will die singing your praise i was afflicted with all kinds of diseases i say it's not it's not i will not be the first to die if i die but if i die i will die with style saying jesus saying lord i didn't know that some things were being weighed in the realm of the spirit the bible speaking about joseph he said it, it, about jacob he said like a prince hast thou power with god and has prevailed a change of ranking suddenly strength came all the afflictions were healed suddenly anointing came and i began to understand the mysteries of god please help tell your neighbor the journey will not end here oh my god oh my god it will not end here 
Satan is still laughing so the journey will not end until you come to the other side the claims of darkness are withdrawn your obedience in the courts of God has pedestaled you as a prince you have found power with God and you have prevailed that's when you have the stature to come and say I speak by the mouth of God because by experience you have what prevailed enough of dry cheeky Christians without experience in God we need men that have stature, men that have marks, the marks of fighting, the marks of, oh my God. I tell you in a short while, in a short while, the place that are known for the worship of darkness shall receive new visitors, men that speak a new language, they belong to a new tribe, they dance to the beat of a different drummer, they pledge their allegiance to a different flag. Thou shalt arise, the Bible says, and have mercy upon that people for the time to favor her. Set time is come. First, there's a set time. There's a set time when darkness becomes light. There's a set time when the noonday sun comes to shine and it shines upon your face to reveal you to your generation. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning. Tell your neighbor, weeping may endure. You see, when joy comes, you forget that you were weeping. Because you are a prince. You have found power. Found power with God. Hallelujah. It's not hopeless. It's not helpless. But there is yet a generation that must speak for God. So that the equation will be balanced. I salute you. This journey that we have embarked upon is a fierce journey of the spirit. But it is in this journey that princes are forged. People that defy the enemy. They rebelled against the devil. I know there's some crisis in the home right now. Rebel against the devil. I know there are some problems right now. The finances are not, they, they, they waver. For, for long times, the hand is dry. Don't worry. You can still rebel against the devil. I know that once and again strange sickness comes upon you as if you bathe in affliction. Um, you, you can still rebel against the devil. Job was naked. He had boils on his body. He was afflicted silly. He could only lie on ashes and on his back. But in that defeated, seemingly defeated posture, he looked to the sky and he saw that the three northern stars were perpetually in their place and nothing could move them out of their alignment and their orbit he said i know i know what do you know everything might be out of place but there's still something that god holds in place just so that you will know i know my redeemer i know somebody make that a confession i know i know I know I don't know about you, but I know. Ah, the circumstances may not suggest so, but I know. I know. It's as if I was born in a bad family. Everybody under the limitations of the devil. When you look around there, there's more reasons for you to be afraid than for you to be in faith. But I know that my redeemer lives. That's a faith that burns with fire. It is tested in the furnace of affliction. It comes out like gold. It installs princes, men that speak for God. And when the devil comes and sees the track record and the scars, he moves out. Because this one has been tried. Now, do not fail when you are tried. The Bible says, He that falleth in the day of adversity, it is because his strength is small. Now we have to go back to our Bible study. You know, I feel like going on, but there's a syllabus here. I, I was not almost preaching, I was almost soaring. <laughs> My God. <laughs> I was about to take a flight in God. And, but we have to come back. I know. I know. I just got home, I wanted to rest for 30 minutes, and my eyes opened. I saw Eagles Christian Conference. That was the name. Eagles Christian Conference. I saw 
people from different nations, men of fire, they have fire in their bones, pepper in their chromosomes. Some men, I saw them coming in, coming in. Something massive began to take place in this land. Even the devil is not strong enough to, to put that out. Ah, there is a lamp. There is a lamp, a light that the devil can quench. Keep it burning. That's the light fired in by your spirit. That's, that's the, the, the spark of God that is lit on your inside. He cannot quench that lamp. By the illumination thereof, you can navigate your way. Even in the midst of darkness, you can still find you. Eagles Christian Conference. The Lord will help us. Hallelujah. All right. I said that in the evening I will show us some things. And there are two ways by which demons can be identified. Demons are, can be identified by the territory that they operate. And so you find that there are several demons do not want to be casted out of some regions and so you will find demons pleading with jesus cast us into the swine so that we can still remain in the territory are you still with me demons are territorially based demons that operate in makoti cannot just decide to start operating in kaduna except a demon has secured a legal ground and invites them to come and be part of his gang Spirit realm is legalistic. The Bible is straight about these things. And if we study more carefully, you will understand how that realm operates. And so you find some demons begging. Do not cast us into the swine. Let's remain in the territory. And if you are into crusades, there are some people that are called Charlies. Charlies. These are people that attend crusades not because they want to give their life to Christ. But they attend crusades so that when demons are casted out, they receive them. So in a Charlie, you can find up to 2,000 demons. In a Charlie, you can find up to 12,000 demons. You know, the madman of Gadara said, my name is Legion because we are many. And you know, the word Legion is not new. It's a Roman military term describing a garrison of 6,000 to 12,000 soldiers. If it's more than 12,000, then they begin to form a different legion. So those days in the Roman Empire, we, they had nine legions. The first legion, Phoenix Legion, the second legion. And they use, they give each legion a name of an animal. They had up to nine legions to show you how strong their army was. Are you following that? And the demon said, my name is what? It's legion. The madman of Gadara was a chari, was a charlie. When demons are casted down, they come to what? Absorb them. And many mighty men of God found charlies like that in crusades. Charlies, he can actually change his character five times before you now. Can talk like a woman, talk like a man, talk like a cat, talk like a, a dog, talk like just now. He can just different demons can give expression to different kinds of demons those right now in u.s and london people pay money to come and see charlie's display but that thing that they are doing is just giving expression to different demons you get it and the reason for that kind of technology is so that some demons can be kept within certain territories they don't want to be driven out because if they go to another territory they may, it may take time before they will find a legal ground to possess a man. Do you understand that? And I told you yesterday that if demons do not possess something, they suffer. So sometimes they possess trees and make those trees portals. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I, I said demons can possess trees. And when they do so, they make those trees portals. When people are holding witchcraft meetings, they, they host them in those trees where demons possess. Do you get it? Okay, let me give you a test. I found this one on the field. I don't have any scripture to back it up. 
But can I give you? Have you seen all those trees that black birds normally perch on in the evening and cry? They are portals. They are covens. They have demons inside of them. I, I brought that from the field. We noticed that in a particular police barrack where we were staying, those strange birds used to come upon some trees like that. And while we were praying one evening, we felt led of the Holy Spirit to go and pray and anoint them and close the gate. What did we do? Pray. We did what? Anoint. Then we what? Close. You will not believe what happened thereafter. We wanted to hold a crusade. So we went around all those trees that the black bears used to perch upon and cry in the evening time. Prayed upon them, anointed them, closed the doorways. Few days to the crusade, they wrote us a letter and said, Since you close our door, let us meet on the crusade ground. <laughs> you close our door? All right. We will come to your own domain now. You don't you have made us restless. No place to dwell. So we are coming. Make plans for us. Buy extra seats. We'll be there in Jesus' name. When they sent the letter, I was actually afraid. You know, I, I can say the truth now, you know. I sent the first preacher. You go preach this night. So that if if somebody will die, let it start from there. Go preach. You know, preachers are actually not always in faith, you know. Uh, amen. <laughs> I said, you go preach. I'll support with prayers. What I meant was, you are better to be slain. <laughs> and after observing the crusade diligently, everything went as planned. I said, oh, they didn't come today, all right. I went to my friend, he's a prophet. That's my friend. I said, tomorrow is your time. All right? Make sure you see everything there. Because there will be much to see. In Jesus' name. <laughs> I'll give you support from the back. <laughs> so, <laughs> he went and preached, nothing happened. So when I saw that nothing happened, I went and put my white suit. Like Benny Hinn. You know, those days I wanted to be like Benny Hinn. You know? Even now, I still want to be like him. But I had white suit in keeping with the order. Yes, of Benny Hinn. I had white suit. So I put it on that night. I, I, I glided into the crusade ground. That was the day that they came. <laughs> the Lord gave you understanding. <laughs> Preached a very strong evangelical message. Gave an altar, uh, an altar call. 500 people came out to give their life to Christ. Half of this number were possessed. They didn't come to give their life to Christ. They came to see me so that our eyes would jam. So that they would bewitch me on the pulpit there. So when I came to lead them to Christ, I heard the microphone and said something that we don't get to say when leading people to Christ. I said, fire. I don't know where it came from. Now, how will you come to lead people to Christ and begin with what? With fire. And when I said fire, about 120 people started manifesting. I've never seen deliverance like that on massive scale like that time. Boom! It was like a bomb went out. All kinds of, of manifestation. And our intercessory crew were quite a number those days that formed the crew. About 20 to 30 people well fired. The, the things I used to teach them, there was enough practical that day. You see one like frog. All kinds of casted out devils from 9 o'clock to 11.30 and there was headache because of stress. All kinds of things. But the potter, the potter that the devil used to operate in that territory was what? Closed. That was what happened. Death, strange death stopped in that place. Strange miscarriages stopped. All kinds of things stopped. And it was as if the reign of God came down. And that's why an evangelist is not qualified to be an evangelist if he does not know how to expel demons. 
Hallelujah. Come with me in the Bible. Let's move. I have eight um, verbs here that will give you insight into whether demons are in operation around your life or in the lives of other people. Are you still with me? I say, are you still with me? Amen. Number one, verbs. You know, I said I use verbs because a verb is a doing word, it's an action word. It reveals an activity, an action. So I use those verbs so that we can identify them by their actions. Are you following now? Okay. All right. Number one, demons and ties. Okay. Demons do what? Entire. By enticement, they are trying to attract your attention. Get your attention to consider something that you don't get to normally consider. Enticement. Create a spark around you. See, demons can talk. They can speak. They are persons without bodies. As you are passing on campus in BSU, then he, he brings you to your notice. A young damsel that is passing by say how about this one you were bubbling in tongues and thinking of glory and then he just enticed you so that he can catch your attention and show you some All right now you must take note when your attention is being caught and is being focused on something that you know is not within the scope of that which is allowable in the kingdom of God. Are you still with me here? I say, are you with me here? Now, you see, if as a preacher, amen, if as a preacher, you don't know how to get renewal, very soon you'll soon be struck down. Because when you go preach, you might come back and you need an overhaul. There are some times when you come back from the field, you need to quit preaching for two weeks and focus on you. Maybe new lusts have been born. New kind of stuff is beginning to find expression in your life. Stop preaching, close down for two weeks, get back to your intensive care unit. You need to run prayers eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours for three days. With fasting, you break by six o'clock and check yourself and flex your spiritual muscles again. And see that your heart is read of lust, read of covetousness, read of everything that makes you backslide in your heart. And then you come back to form. If you don't do that regularly, you cannot be accurate regularly. Very soon a spirit is going to employ your powers and use your powers to adorn the kingdom of darkness. I've seen people use... The prophetic gift as a means to steal. Now the truth is this, we must preserve the integrity of the ministry of Jesus that have been handed over to us in this generation. So many guys do so many things on the pulpit. And you see, the God is coming to judge and to clean up his church. So I sound an alarm. Hallelujah. In any capacity that you are a Christian leader, maybe on campus and all of that, when you notice that there is something drawing your affection to something that you know is not God. Amen. It's time for checkup. If you lose your virtue of sincerity, you'll be overtaken by demons. Hallelujah. Preacher started preaching a message, wonderful message, wonderful message, and just going, and then suddenly his message shifted. What did he say again? He said, if somebody claims to know how to hear God, check his car. That guy has gone out of the Bible. He's giving voice to a demon spirit, but you don't know when people shift. It's possible for you to be a fountain that is not sanctified, and you can speak for God in 25 minutes and speak for the devil in five minutes, and at the end of the service, people don't know what they believe again because many fountains were projected. The other day, a man came and said his own angel is called Jasper. 
And he said, if you want to marry, why are you not exposing your legs, sister? And that's what he preached that fervently for about one hour. Then he said, now miracle service, miracle. Laid hands on somebody and stone came out of the head. That man is not of God. It is possible for somebody to be anointed of God and then drift into the occultic. That's the case study of Saul. Started well, but that which began in God can also be corrupt eventually. If it does not depend on God as much as it did before, in order for him to receive and to deliver and to be empowered by God, demons can take over. But they don't start with, with a raw. They start by what? Enticing. Enticement is a satanic formula, a satanic recipe of presenting a product to you. Presenting what? A product. And then see if you'll be interested. The devil doesn't know the area of your weakness. He doesn't know the area of your lust. So he comes with products and comes to entice you. The Bible says that when any man is tempted, let him not say, is tempted by God for every man is tempted when it is he's drawn in his own lusts and enticed hey that scripture makes us to understand that the lost is not from the devil the loss is his own loss yes it was the devil a spirit of lust that came all right and the man did not consider his state to be a state that needs intensive care. Do you understand that? He harbored the loss. He pampered it. Put cushion for it. Is that not his loss? He likes it. Yes, the devil came with that loss. But he decided to receive it. And to what? To harbor it. And to what? Keep it. And to incubate it. He said that's the way a man is drawn away. In his own lust. When... He's enticed in the area of his loss. That's how sin is born. So the man had to do something to maintain that loss. That's number one. You must see that. Then the devil now came and enticed him along the lines of his loss. That's when the man now sinned. And the Bible revealed that it takes a gestation period to be involved in a conscious sin. He said when when Sin is full grown. Gives birth to. No, that's not where it started. When what? Lost. It's full grown. Gives birth to sin. That's gestation period. If a man carries out an act of sin, there was a build up of lust, which he refused to renounce because he lost his sense and his virtue of sincerity. Do you get it now? That's the only way lust can build up and become an act. When it becomes an act, there's accusation inside. The government of God makes you feel uneasy because of that action, which is contrary to the teachings of God and the instructions of God. Now, many people go back, reasonable people will go back to God and say, I'm sorry, I repent. I renounce it. I will not go back to it again. But several people are not hard on sin in their lives. They just go back and say yes we have access to the blood of jesus and then they see open some part of the door for some possibility maybe because of the fire you know when somebody wants is expecting fire outbreak he leaves his door small so that it will be easy for him to escape that's how people are with respect to sin they don't get to close the door and say no more they are libra with it if you know what you are toiling with you will know that there's no gray area in the kingdom of God. It's either you are for God absolutely and you say so by an act of your will. That attempt to be Libra is actually a state of backsliding in your heart. So the devil normally comes to entice you when he sees that you are harboring a lust inside. So demons do what? Time. If you are a preacher and it's as if the financial situation is stringent, be careful. Keep praying. 
because the devil will try to use that atmosphere to sow a seed of covetousness into your heart and then you now come and see another preacher riding on crv honda say my god and you look at your shoe and suddenly the devil begins to speak to you because you have already created a, a ground which is not consistent with the laws of god the laws of the spirit say they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise god i'm dealing with god on my own scale you are dealing with god on your own scale it it is not accurate for you to use my scale to judge your life because you don't know my scale and that's why the bible says who are thou that thou judges another man's servant before his master he stands or falls i have a call to bring order and to also reveal heresies and errors that's i have a personal call along that line and when i carry out this call i don't point people i point doctrines and errors do you understand that we accept the brother to be part of the body of christ but we reject that thing he brought which is contrary to scripture you see that you are a good brother but this thing you preach now is not the bible you gave voice to the spirit of error because the scriptures have convicted you that you are on a path that is slippery do you get it i'm not speaking about the man but speaking about that which came from the man which is not consistent with the word of god if you compare yourself with another man and use his own success as the yardstick to make sure whether you are successful or not you're already out of line with the unique part of spiritual progress that God has put you. And the devil knows how to do that through circumstances and situations. If your heart is weak and if you have not yet found security in God, it's very easy for you to use another man's life as a template to judge your life. And it is easy for you to now move into the flesh, to try to prove that you are not failing. Anytime people yield to the spirit of competition, watch it, there's a spirit close by. The spirit of com the competition is an act of the flesh. But it remains there. Very soon, he will receive empowerment from the kingdom of darkness to make that his own way of ministry, his own style. Enticement. Uses your circumstances, your situation, and your lust as a means of enticing you so that there is a minor angular deviation from the path of spiritual progress and the devil now has access to your soul he can now give you counsel and suggestions that's how great people were turned out of the way once in a while you need to run a checkup on yourself and i advise once every month a checkup ebenezer where are you where's my friend she's at the back when last did you check yourself up in the spirit to see if you are okay? Check up. This is not public prayer. This is me under God. Allowing the radar to put me on the spotlight. Here am I. Reveal my tongue if there's error in it, if there's deceit in it, if there's darkness in my heart locking there. Because the Bible says, who can understand these errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. When last did you do this to God and say, see me? No checkup. When last did you run a checkup? I know you pray very well, but do you do checkup? Not corporate prayer, personal prayer, and you put yourself under the scale and allow God to pick out anything that is on the path of departure. Do you do that? You do it? Okay, I believe you. Hallelujah. Check up once a month. Check up. Let him try the reins. The Bible says, I am the Lord that tried the reins, that the fibers of your heart. I check it. But we must give him the opportunity to do that. Because he will challenge your holiness. He will challenge your righteousness. He will talk about the way you use your eye. That lust has already captured the potential of sight. And right now, when you look upon a man, you see much more than normal people see. 
because some you are seeing through the eye of loss you need a checkup tell your neighbor you need a checkup but smile so that they won't know yeah. you need some you need a check <laughs> in the name of jesus the higher you go the more careful you need to become run frequent checkups if not your name will be on the newspaper the devil will allow you rise and he will cut you down and then punch will pick it another preacher in scandal and the thing we sell so you need frequent checkups where you just go bare before god say here am i i know christians don't do that anymore the old saints used to do it check up check up by holding onto the horns of the altar until he enlightens he lights our candle and enlightens our darkness that was the prayer of david thou will light my candle thou will enlighten my darkness that was a, do you pray, pray that kind of prayer i want you to enlighten do you still pray that kind of prayer you don't you don't do check up you just wake up in tongues babo santa baboria ma balate i'm strong i'm healed i go to conquer i go to overcome everybody goes out of their ways to be a blessing to me i'm the head not the tail above not beneath i have two intercontinental ballistic missiles that can take two cities that's psychology come back and go to the intensive care unit for checkup you might find a yam that god implant and the bible says every tree that my heavenly father has not planted needs to be what something as big as a yam tuba locking around the Lord give you understanding in Jesus mighty name. You need to run frequent checkups so that you know what kind of enticements have been brought to your heart. And how much have they been able to possess your soul. I know that God prospers people. It is in the Bible that God is the, the spirit of God is the original spirit that makes men get wealth. Amen. But Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. He said that he hates one and serve the other then he now brought what was in his mind you cannot serve god and man it means that the same way money god attracts human worship money can attract human worship and if the preaching of prosperity is not balanced mammon possesses people's soul and the average christian doesn't go for checkup and he just goes large speaking the language of covetousness the language of mammon he makes money his unique goal and corruption begins to find expression in his soul it, once he had something original but very soon over 10 years 15 years you see that the quality of what he's running with now is not as tenacious as accurate as dense as witty as that which he had five years ago because these are gradual adjustments that enticement has been able to establish and the average christian is not sincere enough to see between the lines and the lies and to come to that point where we allow god to try the rings the fibers of our heart so that everything that is not within the context of god's government he can fish it out and enlighten our darkness number two demons after the end times demons can harass this one is more aggressive it's more aggressive the lord give you understanding <laughs> in the name of jesus demons do what harass that one has pressure enticement is trying to see what you will call it are you interested do you care for this <laughs> my pastor in abuja he went to turkey somebody knocked the door and said do you care for a turkish woman a turkish damsel do you care that's the enticement <laughs> he doesn't know your disposition doesn't know your mood doesn't understand your emotional template doesn't have insight into your faith but he came with came with business are you by any means you are not too sure we didn't see you praying when you came in so do you lie what a turkish woman <laughs> you know? the devil is interesting he he speaks your language especially when you are weak 
in the flesh you thinking like a natural man he shows up and say hey that's how enticement is from afar from a distance comes into your corridor tries to break into your wall tries to shift your attention your eyes are too straight you are looking on god too much you can have the liberty of turning your neck this side and turn your neck that side it makes gives you a world view a perspective that is more global hallelujah but in harassment it doesn't give you a choice he, he haunts you with it in the dream he brings the product in in the natural he displays it those days they said the way of holiness was that you should not watch television so somebody builds a big mansion but there's no television 